Hey, it's Don, the auction professor. We're going to take a short trip to a local antique mall, probably spend about an hour in there, and we're just going to see what we can find. It's an evening. It's about 6.30 at night. A lot of the antique malls around here are open till 8. So let's head on out there, and we're going to come back and show you what we found. Here we go, here's some maps, something I always look for. Nice early vintage, brochures. Oh, what do we got here? Wooden horses. See one of these? No, I've never seen. Holds 25 discs. There's a carousel that holds 360, just like that. But it's like that. License plates. New Ertel. Shoko. That's a name brand. Shoko. A little expensive but decent piece. Thirty bucks. Large size with a shield. There you go, Coke cooler. I imagine those are springs. No, it's not. Hmm. Sometimes they're spring and loaded and then they pop back up. Twenty-five. Nice little compressor. See the slot. Interesting piece, a little too expensive. Still has some in it. Like a branch. Old stage light. It's always nice to come out during Christmas time. Someone's homemade.
pork or uh, little pineapple people. 1950s Japan. Actually, a real good price. Probably worth 15 or 20. Modern day. Mother of Pearl. Oh wow, that stone, that's pretty weird. Bunch of religious medals. Nice old paperweight. In fact, we're going to get that. Up. Vintage Tonka. This one's for Dom. 12 bucks. Too much. Early disposable Pepsi, 1960s. No, no return. Those are the disposable kind. Worth like ten bucks. No idea. You could return. You could. You can't anymore. Oh well, yeah. Back then you could. Fifties pink. Oh, it's McCoy too, huh? Small gray McCoy. Eight bucks, huh? It's not a bad piece. Probably a little high, but not too bad. Kraft Macaroni and Cheese, it's the same company. Is that like two pieces to the same buckle? Looks like it's one side that they clip together from that. I location. would think. Could I see those? Yeah, sure. Let me go get the keys. Sure. Thank you. That's nice too. Little kids' ties. Oh no, there. That's a um, Masonic. Yeah. And that's a military. Like it's two parts to the same thing. Mm -hmm. Oh yeah, I see. Yeah, those two go together. I'll I take can't that. Get them together. I'll take that. Okay. I think it goes like, well, yeah. Yeah, but you can't reach it. Yeah, I got you. But that's the same thing. I'll definitely take those too. Okay. You got a place that you can set stuff up. Yeah, there for I'll me? set them right Would up. Would you mind setting that up there too? I'll no. take that too. Thank you, ma'am. You bet. Here's a military piece. Antique World War One U.S. medical shipping tin box. I'll have to look this one up at home. That's actually probably a decent price for something like that. I'll get down if they can see it. You can see Med Department USA vials, eight ounce vials of whatever it is. Very interesting. Yeah. It's marks. Where is it marked? Oh, there it is. Yeah, it is marks. No, there's an early marks. 
Not a bad looking piece. A little higher than I would pay. All right, let's look at Mark's horse. There's an Elsie. How did they even mark it Elsie? Chessie from the train. Somebody's idea. I see they don't make bat juice. Macy. It's probably a new piece. A big silver shaker. It's a sugar shaker. They don't say that, but that's it. It's just junk, but it's pretty. Hmm. Eddie and the cruisers. James Taylor. Oh. If you want to know if it's an original printing, it'll have that red spot where Detroit is. It's the original. There's a Fenton bird, I bet you. Oh, it's signed on the bottom. Yeah, Fenton hand painted bird. Not a bad piece. Those are Fenton. Yep. 
early fall. Well, we're back. Um, I'm just going to show you. You saw the place. It's not a huge antique mall, but it's fairly decent. It's got a lot of nice, interesting things. A lot of people shop there for local holidays and things along that line. It's one of the better malls around here. I've got information down below to where we went. Dan, the owner, was just a really nice guy, very friendly, helpful, um, willing to work with me on prices when they could. So it was a good experience for us. We did find some stuff. I did spend about $82 and some odd change on everything I got. Let me start off with one of the things I liked the best. And Dom, Primetime Treasure Hunter, will appreciate this one for sure. It's a new in-package 1960s large-size soldier with parachute made in Hong Kong. Most definitely 1960s. Never been punched, so the hole is still there for a rack hanging. It has instructions. It has a... 10 cents original price on it so you can tell this is an early original one really unique i spent just a couple dollars if i remember again everything cost 82 dollars this i'll probably get about 30 or 40 dollars out of very easily so almost half of my money back from just this one piece right here let me show you a couple of the cuter things i got now i don't mess with much pottery or ceramics but these are anthropomorphic uh pineapples hand painted marked in japan has actual corks so i'm sure these are early probably circa 1930s or at the latest probably about the 50s i would say because these were made these similar style before the war and then after the war some of them will say occupation which is like 46 through 50 some odd. i think nine years we occupied japan somewhere in that range not really important on the time itself but if they're marked occupied they're a little differently priced but for two dollars and a few cents i think i got into these i'll probably get about 1850 just because they're early they're cute it's a couple they're hand painted original corks excellent condition not a mark on them i don't mess with many salt and pepper shakers but the anthropomorphic foods seem to go very very well for us so rather interesting rather unique ones there now since we're here on figures let me show you this as well now this is a hand carved now i'm not sure what kind of wood this is i'm gonna have to check it out a little further but it has brass or glass eyes so it is definitely an earlier one it's excellent uh piece of artwork here i would say just really unique i think i got about a dollar fifty into this one here last item like this i sold was a dog and it was pretty much the same but not as nicely done and it just had carved eyes this one should do much better in the collectibles the animal section under a vintage say 1930s carved cat really a nice one here i expect i'll probably get about 25 bucks that's about what i got for the dog i've sold other animals i've had a, a porcupine a skunk um, a couple other dogs in the past all these little wooden ones that are nicely done go very well and this one's finished as well so too old to smell the the scent of the wood but it's a real nice one here honestly i love these kind of things here now let me show you one of the staples now these were twelve dollars another set of gold filled glasses and it's actually marked b l on here so something like this for 12 bucks has a little bit of a ding to it there but i'm not really worried a person will melt this down or they will fix it up and the earpieces won't be that essential in my opinion you can replace that sort of thing but again i love glasses so this set here for my 12 bucks i should get about 50 or 60 back because it's Bausch and lamb now it's marked gold filled as well so and the case is in really nice usable condition so that's one of the things i look for nice um velvet lining still on the inside so just a really nice example here again 82 dollars is what i have honestly into everything uh let's see here this was a dollar and i think 50 cents or dollar 75 now it doesn't look like much it's uh, hand painted probably a japanese piece but it has an advertisement on the top for a local area and it's highway uh let's see here spillway highway 68 uh near kentucky dam so this is an advertising or a tourist travel piece 15 20 bucks i mean it's nothing spectacular but if i add up everything i i got here for my 82 dollar investment i'm gonna get it like three 60-ish back so again this is just an hour or so of my time it's local 
if you're, you're bored sometime or you just want to get out and do something, that's what I do sometimes. I'll just hit a store and just see what I can find. Now, this was $6. It had no location on it, but I've been to this place. This is Niagara Falls, without a doubt. That's the rapids um, down below, and that's the main bridge. It's got a little bit of a damage to it, but this is an original, probably circa... Oh, geez, maybe 1910-ish uh, around, just based on the glass. Almost all of these I get about 20 bucks for. I'll set it up in the turrets section or in the paperweight section. It's an excellent condition. There's not a chip or a ding or anything on it. And usually these have some issues with them from being this old. But it's just a spectacular piece. Even the face, not a chip or a mark in it. Very nice. Again, at least 20 bucks back on this one. Now I'll show you, let's, let's show you the most expensive piece I got. Now, I'm going to hold this up for a minute and see if anybody knows what this is. I'm sure there's a few folks who will know instantly what this is. I'll give it a second. In fact, let's come back to this in just a minute here so you can ponder what that is. Now, he had just gotten some items in there, and it was a men's um, jewelry box, basically, for cufflinks and stuff. And I pulled these out of there. He said five. I offered three. I got them for three. So these are Swank, uh, Marlin, um, Big deep sea fisher fishermen will love these. I've been out in Destin before in Florida and we went deep sea fishing. So I know how enjoyable and how many people return over and over again. We caught like, I don't know, maybe 20 red snappers, each of us, you know. And then um, there was a couple other fish that I hadn't heard of. But it was a really interesting and, and really a fun experience for us. It was like a half a day event. But the, the fishermen who do that love these sorts of things. Now I'm going to put like 34 50 maybe a little higher on them. Um, I expect 15 20 bucks easy off of these. They're going to sit for a while, so I'm going to have these sitting up there, but they will sell. I love these figural um, fish and stuff like that. The cufflinks are just awesome pieces. Now, the next item are these, and they were sitting like this with the string, so you couldn't do much with them, but I, I knew what they were. I've seen similar styles. If you don't know or, or don't recognize these, these are, um, uh, it's a buckle. It's probably from the, say, 30s or 40s I would gather by the looks of them excellent excellent condition hardly looks used the stones look like they are actual stones in there and you can see the back so they're exposed they're not like junk for the money on this one I'm going to put like maybe 75 to somewhere in that range 57 50 to 75 bucks and just see what happens most of these figural style of buckles like this i have always sold again it may sit for a little while but i'm not worried at all half my money is going to come back from that soldier with the parachute so you know i have really nothing to lose on this one and these always do sell for us uh, these are the one type of things that i don't keep in house are these animal especially being a a salamander, uh, a newt or a salamander. I would say salamander personally. We've had newt in a tank before that laid eggs. Newts are pretty cool, so I, I instantly loved this. So anyway, a really nice one there. Let's go back to this piece here. Now, I don't know how well you're going to see it, but these are touch marks on there. I think you can just barely see it. In fact, let me zoom in. Um, yeah, I don't know what the reflection, if you're going to get to see it very well, but they're touch marks. So I can date this. I've got almost 30 bucks, 20 some odd bucks in it. It's right on the cusp of maybe wouldn't be worth it, but maybe would. I know somebody who I can sell this to is the only reason I took a chance on it. Now, I don't know those marks by, by heart. So the silver site that I've showed you here in the past, you can go there. I can just narrow this down and I'll be able to tell exactly who made this and when. There's date marks on here. There's city of origin and company manufacturer as well. So I can tell who made it, when, where, and the whole works on this piece here. So that's always a plus on this one. I don't mind buying something like this. Silver goes up and down. It, again, I'll probably get about 45 bucks um, on this minimum. If it's somebody good, maybe much more than that. I'll just, again, have to look this up. But it's a salt. It's an open salt. You would have had a little spoon and you would have dished out salt onto your plate or onto your items from there. Um, most of the glass ones are what I run into. It's very rare to see a silver one, sterling marked these days. But again, I'm not going to make a fortune on this one, but I love these type of things. So even if I wasn't going to make much on it, I'd probably still take a shot just to have the fun of looking up and finding out who that is on there. I mean, I love what I do, and this is just a perfect example. I am perfectly at home at an antique mall any day of the week, any time. Now, one of the last places I looked in there, and I thought, you know, there's not a whole bunch more left in here, and, you know, I've already looked. I found this. 
Now, this is a, a piece of Victorian jewelry, is what this is. Um, nice fabric still, and I really don't see these very often. It's for a watch. You could have clipped a watch under here, or it has the standard clip. And this is the standard clip for almost any pocket watch that I've run into. Um, hopefully, let's see if we can do it so you can see it a little better. It's marked um, gold filled. This piece up here even, um, this clips onto the belt or a pocket or something like that. It's got a spring. It's spring loaded. Now, I've just sold these for 15 or 20 bucks. Just this part up here. Um, I think I've got less than nine bucks into this one and a couple other pieces I will show you. Again, $82. Uh, we're heading on like 360 to close to 400 probably on return on my investment. So profit-wise, close to 300 for an hour. And it's literally, we weren't even there an hour. So anyway, um, just went in, looked, and off we went. So that's a really nice piece. I don't really know what these are called. I'm sure maybe Annie or somebody like that will know better on that than I do. I know enough to buy them. I usually don't find the fabric with it. I do find, you know, the clips and all that kind of stuff. It's just a nice piece here. You know, I'm probably going to put 75 on it and just see what happens. Really nice example. Again, there could be more than 400, but I'm just giving you the bottom end on what I expect. Profit-wise, close to three. Now, if some of these turn out to be better items, there's some I haven't looked up and some of the marks and things like that. I've got some chains I'll show you in just a second here. I could be running for a $500 return with a $400 profit on it, but I'm at least going to get around three back in profit after all said and done, listing and everything. That's that's typical on this kind of stuff. So I cherry picked the place. Um, it's stuff that's sitting there. I didn't quibble on almost any of the prices. I bought them at what the price there, there was on it. So I don't feel guilty buying something if I'm buying something at their asking price. A couple of things like the salt, I did get $3 knocked off. Cufflinks were iffy because I couldn't tell for sure if, if they were in, in excellent condition or not just by the quick look I had. But other than that, you know, everything was at the price they asked on it. So, you know, again, it's, it was a nice store. Um, I'd go back again for sure. Um, and I would recommend um, hitting that store as well, in my personal opinion, because we're going to make some decent money. Plus, the store made some money off of it, too. So now this is a pocket watch chain. Now, I think these are called bales. I think somebody had shouted out. I'm not sure what you'd call them, but it has the little spring-loaded thing here. In fact, I can't quite grasp it. Yeah, there's a little spring-loaded thing, and you can just now see it. And then the clip, and it's marked um, gold filled down here with the company name. I'm going to have to look that up, but this was like 9 bucks or so. I get around 45 to 57.50 for all of these types of chains. I usually put 75 on them when I list them. Um, and then take what I can get. I think the lowest I've ever gotten on one of these chains was like $35 or $37.50. And I got this one, and I got a little nicer one here. Now, length of them means a little bit, too. They're not much different, but the longer one usually goes for much better. This has a little finer detail. It's marked as well on the top on the, the spring-loaded piece. So one of these would go on a clip, or it could even go on something like this, where it would clip on to that little loop there. And then this part would be on the watch itself. And then you'd be able to pull it out of your pocket. So, again, I got 82 into everything. These two watch chains alone will get me 82 bucks without a doubt, I would say. So, you know, you can make money even at the ones that most people will pass on if you know what you're looking for. You have to know... Um, a lot of different categories to make it in an antique mall like that though so it's not for everybody um, if you just like going and looking at antiques which I always recommend you'll learn something just by going to an antique mall even if you don't find anything you're gonna learn values and, and learn what names and stuff are if you look at the labels to figure out what's what stuff selling for so I would always recommend people if they want to get into this to take some time out in those types of places it will help you as well when you're going to garage sales or flea markets or auctions or something like that estate sales especially it'll help you um understand what stuff is a little better in my opinion i've trolled and and, and um cherry picked antique malls for 20 plus years um when i was a child and my grand my grandmother passed away my last of my my grandparents um i helped clear out the estate my uncle was an antique dealer so i as a small child you know, was fascinated by the stuff that she had in her collection. And she had saved everything. She was a pack rat. So she had my father's toys from the 30s and even some toys she had from the 30s, like a Stife Bear and things like that. 
um, wind up tin toys and things. So I I've always appreciated them from a small child's aspect. Whenever I stayed at my grandparents' house, their whole house was an antique uh, museum, basically. I even have a piece of their original furniture that it's been passed down to me forever. Um, something I would never get rid of, of course. But uh, anyway, I love the antiques, and and hopefully, if if you know that's something that you love, this will be a good thing for you to do. You know, money to be made or not, I I still love antique malls. So you know, I do it just because I love it as well as I do make money, and I'm very good at what I do. Um, but again, I've been doing this for a long time. I've been full time reseller for nine plus years, and we've been on the site you know reselling since yahoo auctions was a thing so i go way back into it when no one did them and we got you know ridiculed and made fun of for doing this fad called internet auctions so um, anyway that's what i have for you today hopefully that gave you some thoughts and some ideas if you enjoyed the video please hit that like button down below you can also hit the bell icon to be notified if i post new content or go live subscribe and tell a friend